Hello, my feline loving friends. We're back again, and I will tell you, and I don't, you know, when I think about it, I don't know how many videos I've started out with. You know what I geek out about? <laughs> But I never stop geeking out about the raw cat. I never stop geeking out about the fact that we've got this animal in our homes that has millions of years behind them. They're having made that trip through time relatively unscathed and the amount of time that they've spent living under our roofs in that evolutionary timeline is like this much. So when you get to watch their bodies in action, that's the reminder of who is living with you. I geek out about different body parts because they're all representations of that bigger picture. So today, we're gonna talk about your cat's ears. And first I'm gonna tell you all about the ear and what I geek out about in that respect. And then we're gonna talk about ear positions and what they are trying to tell you. Let's start with the structure of the ear itself. The part that you can see, the big triangles, you know, ears. Anyway, the pinna, which the singular is pinna, the plural is pinna, but apparently pronounced pinna as well. <laughs> That's what I've been told by my English teacher. Anyway, so the pinna are that top of the triangle. So think about the ear as a huge funnel. Find yourself doing this cupping so that you're capturing sound so that you can pull it into your, that's what cats do without having to look like an old man. So cats are, are amazingly adept at localizing sound, taking sound, pulling it in, amplifying it, and also figuring out exactly where it came from. And according to one study, better than any other terrestrial mammal. Cats' hearing is so keen that according to one study, they are, quote, the best sound localizers of any terrestrial mammal, meaning that not only can they pinpoint direction, but distance. So evolved, as a matter of fact, that if you were to draw an invisible line horizontally directly in front of them, they can pinpoint a sound within five degrees. So that is to say that at a distance of about two feet, it's two inches. If the sound source is 25 feet away, they can locate the source of that within two feet. So the pinna are the head of that funnel. They bring in the sound, drawn in, amplified, and taken into the rest of the ear. Now here's another really cool thing. You've probably seen your cat sort of radar around a little bit, uh, the ears moving around. The ears can actually move 180 degrees. The pinna are the things that are spinning, and not only that, they can move independently of one another. So if you've got a threat coming here and something hunting over here or the other way around, the ears can handle that, man. And what controls how those ears can move 180 degrees? Think about it, 30 plus muscles in a cat's ears to make it be able to move independently and to go 180 degrees back. I mean, compare that to a dog's who have 18 muscles. Pretty astounding. And then when you add in on top of all that, the whiskers that line the outside of the ear itself, which can also say, is the temperature changing around me? Is, is something that I should be aware of right over here? There's that as well. And there's something called the Henry's pocket. It is shared with weasels, dogs, and bats, but why it exists? is not entirely sure. One theory is that it helps to trap a very specific range of sound, an upper range of sound. Think of the, the, the sound that a mouse would make and being able to capture that specific range. So you know what, at the end of the day, we gotta ask Henry, because Henry was apparently so taken with his discovery of the pocket that he was like, this is my pocket. Henry's pocket. Think about who the cat is hunting. They're hunting animals that are small and quiet and who operate in higher frequencies. Now, when it comes to the rustling of vegetation underneath them, or again, who might be after them, they gotta hear at lower frequencies as well. To that end, cats can hear at a higher and lower frequency than dogs, humans, and rabbits all, in all ways. Cats can process this information in a much more holistic way than all three. Whether it is the spinning pinna, whether it is the 30 plus muscles, whether it is the range of hearing, that elegant funnel, the deepness of the ear, the vestibular system, this is what I geek out about, folks, because this is the raw cat in action. This is millions of years of evolution in one, no, actually two things, the ears. 
What? What's that you said? Your kids mumble all the time. What? Oh, what can you do for this channel? Well, of course you could uh, subscribe to the channel. That would make us really happy around here. Also, liking this video would go a long way and participating in the conversation that happens in the comments. All three of these things keep this channel nice and healthy, which I would hope helps keep your cat nice and healthy too. So, now that we know the ins and outs, the miraculous thing that makes up a cat's ear, how does that translate into what I know you're wondering about? What do, what do the positions of my cat's ears mean? The first position we're gonna take a look at is, well, neutral. Probably if you're looking at your cat right now as they're just sitting there, before you make a sound, they're probably just neutral, straight up and down. And there's really, you know, when we're talking about context, there's a lot of the other positions that I'm gonna talk about where context is really important, but less so when we're talking neutral, because neutral, is neutral. There's no agenda to the ears. They're not doing anything. They're not doing anything, avoiding anything, etc. They're just there. So that, I feel pretty confident in saying, is your cat at their most relaxed, their most, you know, not fight, not flight, not overly interested, not fearful, not anything. Just neutral. So the next one we're gonna talk about is cat ears pointing forward, <laughs> like that. That is actually, as you saw me do it with my eyes, what am I doing? I'm focusing in on, at the moment, you. I'm focusing in on a target or you know something that really piques my interest. Like, what is it about this thing? And again, there is no sense of fear about this. This is, I am pinpointing this. Now, of course, you can see how that would be incredibly useful when it comes to hunting. I, I, I'm localizing, I'm localizing, there you are. And I'm picking up every little bit of information that I can get about you so that if I go after you, it maximizes my chances of actually succeeding in the hunt. You're gonna see that happen with cats in your home, with other cats, or somebody that they either wanna play or jump on in one way or another. But the context here is, if I'm doing this and I'm looking at another cat, am I just about to accompany it with a butt wiggle and a jump because I'm mock, you know, praying but playing with the other animal? Or is it someone that I'm about to go and get? You know, and again, it's the hunting. I'm maximizing my chances of succeeding, which is to say, you know, getting that other cat and teaching them a thing or two. Their eyes have something to do with this if you played them together. So for instance, ears forward and eyes in that slit, blocking out all information except that just little slit in their pupils. To me, that says, I am focusing in on you like I mean business. You are the center of the universe. And then you've got eyes dilated. What could that mean, you know? And that, to me, it's always, I'm looking for an escape. I'm using this gigantic peripheral vision to make sure there's nothing else going on around me while I'm focusing in with my ears. So does that mean like more of a hunt? See, that's the thing. And, and I think what the beautiful thing is, as I'm teaching you guys, uh, I'm also saying, we don't know, man. We just don't know. And I'll touch on that in a little bit. Next position we'll talk about is radar ears. And already we've talked about how that is possible. The 30 plus muscles in a cat's ears, making it so they can spin 180 degrees. Basically the equivalent of sleeping with one eye open. Because you can go back here. Is there something I'm missing that might be out for me? And woo, I'm at the same time I'm out for you. So I just want to make sure what's going on here. We're taking information in from literally everywhere. So I would say that if radar ears are happening in the home, I would say, okay, what is going on here? But in a very sort of innocuous way, I don't consider it to be that big a deal, except when it is, you know, when the context around them, let's say that there's a dog they're not all that thrilled about, so one eye is focused here, by eye I mean ear, is focused here, and in the meantime, I'm, I can hear the cats playing back there, or mom making dinner back there. Dinner? You know, there's that. That's the kind of alertness, but, but I would say as in terms of communicating stress, there are other positions that are definitely uh, more about stress and less about the hunting skills and just being alert. And that's what we're gonna get to next. 
So the next thing we'll talk about is airplane position. And it's funny because, you know, in reading uh, other, what other people have said about airplane ears, I think it gets, it gets misconstrued with the other position, which is pinning the ears to the head. And that's not what I'm talking about. To me, it's perfectly reasonable to say, you know, this is airplane when they are parallel to the ground. That's, to me, airplane, right? What, what am I right now, folks? Okay, I'm an airplane. When I'm thinking airplane, it encapsulates, you know, from like here to there. And those things can say very different things. In terms of communication, the one thing I can tell you is it is definite unease to some degree, whether it's trepidation uh, or just a, a, an overall sense of things are not right. Absolutely, we go we go airplane for that. Now, if you think about you know out in nature outside, it is definitely a protector against the wind, right? We bring our ears down when we're we're trying to hear things, but suddenly it's just it it hurts or or a, an unfamiliar sound that is piercing and just you remember how sensitive their ears are and it just it's not cool i'm going to shut my ears off a little bit you know so i have this ability to just bring them down bring the flaps down we're coming in for a landing at jfk flaps at 30 degrees you are clear for landing felis caddis when i see a cat just sitting you know, and, and again, context, they, they will have drawn themselves in a little bit. Maybe they're in sort of a loaf position and they're sitting there just watching the world and their ears are an airplane. To me, that's a cat who needs to go to the vet. That's a cat who's not feeling well. That's just my experience. There is nothing I can find uh, in literature that supports that, nor can you know, a lot of the context around airplane ears be supported because there haven't been actual studies done. Otherwise, it is just there's something in this room that is not right. When it comes to the severity of these positions, this one is like, there is to me no disputing where this is in the scale of like, you better be listening to what your cat's telling you right now. And that is the ears pinned back to their head position. It almost looks like they don't have ears when you see them in that position. It's a defensive move. They're pinning their ears to their head so that those ears don't get ripped off in battle. That's pretty much it. It's, it's, I, it's basically just tucking everything in because somebody may try to claw me or bite me and I may lose these beautifully elegant spinning pinna. So I am pinning to my head. Now, I see that more often when it comes to cats who are about to be attacked as opposed to the cats who are doing the attacking. Remember, we were talking about the forward facing for, for cats that are zeroing in. I, to me, in any way, I am happy to be corrected by any behavioral scientists out there, but when zooming in like that, do you think at the last second they're gonna do the pinning thing? Probably not at the top of mind. It probably happens during battle. But for the cat who is on the defensive, the one who's scared, the one who's actually worried that they're about to get you know, their butts kicked, then they'll get small and pin ears back at the same time, potentially even rolling over a little bit. And, and again, that looks like submission, but what that is is getting ready. They're getting their back legs ready also because that's where they can do the most damage is with those really mighty uh, back legs and their claws. They can eviscerate anybody who's coming at them and exposes their belly. So they're getting ready for it, but does it mean they like it? Does it mean they invited it? Does it mean like they made the decision to fight? Absolutely not. So to me, more than not, it's, it's defensive, I'm resigned, I'm scared, here we go. You know, I'm ready for it. Now with everything that I've said, all of this sort of, you know, I am an ear and I am speaking like a little cartoon ear. I am scared. I am taking in things from over here. These are all the, the based in biology, based in evolution for sure. And of course, these things have taken different shapes as cats have made that, that pretty hard turn because as they have evolved, the one thing that they've had to evolve to do is to come into contact with more animals. 
humans and other four-legged animals as well. But there is so much going on within the context of a situation. So, for instance, if you've got a cat, and you didn't even know this, because you adopted a, a, an adult cat who had an unknown history, but maybe that cat's history has uh, something a little traumatic with motorcycles. So if a motorcycle goes by your window, all of a sudden your cat's doing that half radar, half airplane thing, and if the motorcycle idles outside the door, we're going into full airplane. Is that every cat? Of course not. Uh, it's that particular cat. Everyone's an individual, everybody uses their tools differently, and there's so many contexts. I mean, we can say that the ear is doing something, but without the eyes, the tail, the rest of the body in harmony, then we don't have the full picture. And to that end, you should be watching other videos on this channel that talk about other body parts, like my recent video on cattails, Decoded and also dependent on context. But the more you learn about the eyes, the ears, the nose, the tail, the whiskers, the ripples, the muscles, and your cat specifically, the more you can say, well, this is what the ear position is telling me about my cat in this moment. I'm not saying to take this information with a grain of salt. I'm just saying that it is a component of a whole and it gives you insight into your own cat and their distinct story in your life and outside your life. And I think it's a brilliant thing and another thing that I geek out all the time and I invite you to geek out about it as well. To that end, you should also uh, pick up a copy of Total Cat Mojo. That is my book of everything I know in one place, but it also tells you just about everything I know about cats, period. And knowing cat with a capital C means a better relationship with your cat. So don't forget that. Until next time, keep your ears open for our next video. <laughs> oh, the light, love, and mojo to you. Mwah!